Hey everybody, I'm Eric. This is God Killer Game Dev Sunday. I have no stance on uh, your own personal religion, um, what you do with God or don't do with God, or if you think God exists or not. No stance on that. This is uh, just the name of the game is the God Killer, and uh, this is about making that game. I'm doing some stuff with wall panels. Uh, Easier just to show it. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me, I gotta go back and do my, my regular stuff. Okay, so uh, this show, it's about making a game. And my schedule for these sessions is Monday through Thursday, 6 to 8 p.m. in the Pacific Standard Time Zone. Uh, that's the evening. Um, for live coding sessions. And then this thing I'm doing right here is not, a, not coding, it's all the other stuff. It's art, it's level design, 3D modeling. In this particular session, I'm doing 3D modeling and maybe some texturing related to the these uh, decorative things, which I'm going to show you. Okay, so if you're watching a recording of this and you want to hit me when I'm live and maybe chat with me on Twitch, then um, there's going to be some link next to the video, or if you're already on Twitch, you'll, you'll know how to get there. And just come by during the schedule and uh, I'm happy to chat with you. All right, so let me explain this whole system here. It's a system supporting an indie developer who does not have a lot of time and money, perhaps is a little bit lacking in talent. Um, I'm a generalist, I'm, I'm kind of good at art, but I'm not like so wonderful at it. Um, the, it makes sense for me to dedicate myself to some great result in the 3D modeling world or the art world. Um, so to that end, I've relied heavily on procedural generation to automatically make the more basic stuff that I put here look interesting. So let me clean this up a little bit so you can see how it works. Um, let me get rid of a few things. So let's take the marker. Delete the, these. These markers are things that just show me where a point is in three space. Uh, what's this other one? Zero marker. All right. Then I have uh, some decorations that I'll remove so you can see what the start starting point is. First I'll explain strata. Strata are these, these texture patterns that appear <clears throat> at uh, certain elevations. And this thing over here is like a, a reference for me. It shows me um, for a given scheme that I've selected how the textures are going to apply. And we go off into the editor. This, all this complicated stuff, which is all part of my procedural generation. So it's not built into Unity, but it's used to generate the, the uh, decorations and stuff. So I've got different materials. Materials uh, are textures plus a little bit more information um, applied to different named strata. So there's, there's a, a, a strata and B strata, and in A, there's thick and thin. So, with certain material that is uh, thick A, and it looks like this, and uh, another one thick B, it's this lighter green color here, and I have thin, um, here's thin B, and then I have thin A here too. And then here's my out of bounds texture which means basically if I keep going really high or really low um, instead of applying these 
A and B textures and A thick and B thin, I'll just apply the out of bounds texture. So there's four textures for that, and here's the out of bounds texture. It's it's purposefully uh, kind of plain, so that it'll look okay when it's repeating over a large amount of space. Um, and then there's also a, a floor texture. There's a uh, <clears throat> There's a uh, floor A and a floor B, basically. Okay, so because I have that defined, I get on any mesh that uh, uh, meshes uh, some geometry. Any geometry I put here, it will automatically get uh, these different textures applied according to the scheme I've got. So if I create uh, some more stuff down here for the level, I'll show you what happens. Here's it says floor. So this cube here is a, a floor piece. Side of here, I'll make it a little bit larger so I've got something more to play with. Um, all right, so then I can hit apply. Oops. And it just gets like the default textures. Um, I move it up. It gets a different texture according to the height that it's at. So that's how that works. Um, all right, I'll finish making this look like uh, a proper level object. Okay, so the next thing is um, decorations. This it's the name I give them. So if I go to my editor object on the level, um, I have these scripts that run and apply decorations. So I'll, I'll show them one at a time. <clears throat> there is uh, Floor edge script. Here, I'll just disable the other ones so you can see the effect. Okay, so now I've got just the floor edge script on. And it's got <clears throat> it's got some different settings in there that I can use. Um, let me let me run that first so you can see it. So hit apply. So up at the top, it's added this nice little border around everything. And there's different parts that make it up. There's a, there's a basic piece, which is just plain. There's a this light piece here, which is called a special. There's the corner pieces. Okay. Then there's these things called descenders that just come down from the top. And uh, so the script added that automatically. It could have added added it to that other block that I uh, created over there, but I've got a bound set right now that will make it so that it only adds to this middle one. Uh, so then let me add in the descenders. So you can see what those look like. The 
you're basically going to take the tops here and just go all the way down to the bottom. some descenders there. They're more or less randomly uh, generated. I say more or less because it's pseudo-random. And that means that I can set a, uh, a certain seed here and the same result will be generated uh, as the previous time <clears throat> because it uses this same series of pseudo-random numbers. Um, okay, now the last thing is, is what I call wall panels, and they fit inside of any area on the wall that's not decorated. So where the descender is, that's considered decorated, so it won't over, override that part. And this top row here, um, where there's already like some objects like this, and the lights, that's also considered decorated, so it won't redecorate that part. Um, so first I'll show like the crazy thing that I had before I refined it. So I will hit apply. So I've got some pieces. Um, they're kind of like your basic Tetris pieces. There's a couple of L's and there's one long four by one piece. And I made them a little bit fancier looking than just that, but uh, that's that's basically what they are. So it's going to fill in all this space here <clears throat> with these pieces. Or will it? Oh, I forgot to enable it. I forgot to enable it. Okay. I might as well... Okay, no, that's fine. Okay. So, yeah, so there's different settings I've, I've got down here for the wall panels. I can pick specific pieces of which in this rule it will randomly choose one of them. Um, I can set the fill chance to be something less than 100 if I want. What that affects is basically how dense the decoration is going to be on the wall. At 100 it means that if a piece will fit, it's going to place it. Um, and then I can set criteria for which strata the pieces can fit onto. So let me zoom in here and you can see what the end result was. Now these particular pieces, they have a, a texture for them that uh, only looks right on one of the strata. Um, when I put it over the top of this strata B, the lighter colored one, they look kind of kind of off. Um, but anyways, it fills in with all those pieces. Uh, the other thing that I think I'll show is the strata criteria. So basically got these different options. Uh, I can say it only goes on A, it only goes on the thick part of A, B, or, or I can do A thin, B thick, or B thin. I can do thick or thin. So d that's the criteria by which it decides it's going to place on certain strata or not. So I'm going to put it back to where I had it, the more sane option, which is A. And I'm going to run this whole thing again. And right after that, I'll, I'll show what it looks like in the game mode. Like right now, it's it's uh, uh, in the editor mode, or the Unity scene editing mode. All right. So now I've got the decorations just applying to A. And now you can kind of see like it's the decorations have gone over the top of the, the thin part, which also looks not great. I don't know. I'm going to leave that for now. No, no need to mess with that at the moment. 
So I'll just show what that looks like in the game itself. So this is a, a strict top-down view game. And you don't move the camera around. The camera is automatically positioned. Uh, you control this character. It's going to have a choppy frame rate right when it starts out. Uh, okay. So now I've got these walls that are uh, much less plain. They don't look bad. I, I feel like I can improve upon them quite a bit, and I will in this session. But already an improvement over just the, the plain walls I had before. And I've basically uh, found a way to beat the, uh, I think it's called pattern boredom. Where you have a, a single, or pattern fatigue, I think that's it. Uh, let me make sure I'm actually got the right term. Three D pattern fatigue. The idea is if you have here, let me that might not be the right term. Let me keep trying this. Texture. If you get a repeating pattern, your eye doesn't like it. Um, when shown over a large area. Huh. 3D texture. I think I, I think I've got the wrong term because um, it's not coming up. All right, I guess it's not that important. But the you know just as you know you're looking at a pattern it repeats again and again and again, and uh, it doesn't look that good. So there's different ways to break that up, and this is one of them. I added you know this procedural generation to the uh, meshes, and uh, it looks better. It looks much better to me. So I think in one thing I'd like to do is to take the, uh, the sides here and make them have a different texture. Maybe have them be light, see what that looks like. Okay, uh, oh, one more thing I'll show. So, if my character's up here, then you can also see the walls down from this angle. Okay, so now I'm just gonna <clears throat> just gonna try to make these wall panels look better and better. For one, it seems particularly like it needs jazzing up. Uh, let me just try giving it side lights.
cat. I'll try the same thing on this. Well, it is going to make it a lot brighter. I don't know how that'll be but uh, this one I'm more reluctant to make all the sides light because this one comes out further and these would be much thicker well they'd be twice as thick um, so I'm gonna leave that one alone um, Go back to the one though, because I saw some problems with it. So the UVs here are not matching very well. So I, I can fiddle with those a little bit, get them right. So you can see like where the texture here isn't lined up seamlessly. Um, let me work on that. This part looks close enough to being right. I'm gonna get this. This one here looks small. So let me work on that. Trying to find how those line up. Oh, there it is. Okay. Let's be a little bit bigger. I think that's pretty close. Uh, I'm using some software called. Pro Builder, which is uh, free and now officially part of Unity, although you do have to import it through the package manager to get it. It's not just built in right away. Uh, okay, so that looks pretty close. I don't know if I would, could see a few things I could fidget with, but I don't feel like doing that. Um, I think this is probably good to, to start out with. So that I can I can see updates this a little bit faster. I'm going to change the uh, area that's being decorated. And I can do that okay, in this operation zone here. Just kind of moving it just to just include what I want to decorate okay. Uh, I'll, I'll decorate this little block over here instead. But to do that well, I should make it go a little bit higher than it does now. So I can get this, this nice uh, block here in. Uh, which is an A block. Yeah, 
Just let me select the thing I want to select. Come on. There we go. Decorate. Ah, oh, it looks much cooler. That looks pretty sci fi right there. Almost a little too much, though. So this was my... This was supposed to be... My less intense um, light. I think I might bring it down a little bit in intensity. crazy. Oh yeah. Uh, so it seems like that's better. I would like to do something with uh, the thin sections. Here, let me... Uh, just to only be in the thick ones. So, I feel like, like I'm uh, making some stuff that looks cool, but I'm not, I'm not following a cohesive design. I need to stop thinking like, okay, let's make this cool looking thing. And let's actually get back to creating something specific and going for um, a, a real look. So let, let me, uh, I, I know I just announced just a moment ago that I was going to try some Thing X, but what I really want to do right now is just see the forest for the trees design-wise. Uh, I'm making note that this kind of side-lit effect is pretty cool. Um, and I'll hold on to these, these prefabs. I'm thinking also that like these might go better with a different theme. I've got planned. So let me open up Photoshop and come back to my morgue, which is a collection of artistic references.
So this theme that I'm creating is called Purity. I'll zoom in a little bit and uh, go over a few things. I threw out the low saturation thing almost right away. Uh, like I didn't end up wanting stuff that was quite as austere as, as these couple images here. Which, if I just made everything super low saturation, it would that might it might look more like this. But I ended up choosing this palette, which came from this picture, and then I added in this little bit of red here for uh, the main character, who is always red. Uh, I'm going to end up tinting her so that she fits with the palette a little bit better in the theme. So instead of her being bright red, she'll be more this kind of orangish pink mixture so she can fit the theme better so this type of thing with the repeating patterns here um, staying very 90 degrees. I could do that on the walls. I could make this on the walls. I could have a little thing that comes out a little bit from the wall. Yeah, I could do that. also be fun to, to emphasize the, the tiles and have geometry that stayed within the bounds of the tiles and kind of fit that. Um, it might be fun to have more stuff that look like plumbing. Make it kind of watery. This I don't don't think this is really compatible uh, with the direction the, the theme went. This stuff here I was mainly interested in the, the hanging ropes. Okay. Cable stuff. I I did. I did actually create a whole bunch of neat neat things based on that. I'm not working with that right now. Uh, you've seen this texture popping up all over the place. I mean, not this exact one, but one ones like it. So that's what I'm thinking. Ease off the the techiness. Um, I've got another level which is all supposed to be all about being techy. Not a level, a theme, I mean. Um, I think I should play up the tiles. An idea that things are made out of tiles. I, I don't mean like a computer graphics tile, but I mean like a, a ceramic or porcelain tile. You know, it's something that someone put together by hand it kind of would have that feel to it um, I think pipe work would be interesting all these things I can do all right so let me go back to the idea of complementing the thin layer here with some kind of panel that 
that works with it. Um, and the advantage of the, the thin is that it'll always be known to be one high. So I can make wall panels that are based on that as well. So let me start with that. Pipes. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't do like a literal pipe because I don't need the interior uh, to be hollow, and that's more polygons that I'm not going to use because no one will ever see that. So I could do cylinder. I'm wondering if there's one in here that is a. Uh, like a half. Oh, that's like a sphere. Uh, Taurus, is that it? So it'll smooth it for me. So I don't really need to have a lot of sides here. So you can see the smoothing um, when you're further away. Well, I mean, it, so it's it's this texture here, looks smooth, but the polygons that make it up are <clears throat> are not smooth. There's just eight sides to this whole thing. I'm thinking I want to do something like uh, take half of it and have it go along this, uh, this thin strata. Oops. Uh, that's fine. Okay, so build that. So pretty easy to get rid of half of this. Delete the uh, polygons I don't want.
Okay. And I can also take this. Thinking about what a pain it is to kind of uh, position these to specific offsets. So I think I'll also make a, a cube to initially put it inside of. This call it so. Uh, let's see. Thin underpipe. That'll be the name of this new decoration. And I can take the renderer on this and just hide it. Well, before I do that, let me put this in the right spot. see what this looks like up against the, the thin part of the wall. So I'll, I'll snap it over to that. That's the idea. Um, so now that I've got the basic thing here, let me think about what would make it more interesting. Well, one thing I can do is I can make some variations of this, and the idea is they always um, they always go along this line here. So I can take this one, move it over one, call this. Uh, Actually, I'm, I'm even going to, before I get into that, I'm going to make this a proper wall panel and just get it exactly correctly configured uh, so that it can be used and not be oriented the wrong way in different types of mistakes I, I tend to make. Uh, so let me take a look at that. So there's this, this thing here that I created where I say what space it occupies. And this one's just a one by one, so I put an X there. And that's... That should be the last step to make it ready to go, unless I've got it oriented the wrong way. So let me um, add this to the editor, or a new fill rule in the editor. So the way the wall panel rules work is uh, the first one will run, and then the second one will run. So this one will 
be just for adding the underpipe. And it will only apply it to thin. And uh, fill chance 100, meaning if it's possible to place it, it'll place it. So let me try that. I'm going to move this one out of the way so it's, I'm not confused by the generated declaration. I think, I think my uh, selection mask for this is not going quite far enough, so let me fix that before I run it. It's almost certainly not going to work the first time. Weird. Oh, a number of things happened. Okay. So I forgot to set a little attribute of this, and it, the, the, uh, the depth scanner thought this was a, a floor so it put floor decoration on top of it I know how to fix that um, let me turn off this stupid thing so I don't have to keep looking at that alright also it, it didn't it seemingly did not put any uh, underpipes. Ah. thing is I'll, I'll fix the layer so it says ignore raycast uh, that will make it so that uh, that will make it so that uh, uh, this thing here won't happen okay the other thing, the other thing. Oh yeah, just some boring little adjustment to make. Go. Center of the pivot. Okay. So where are my underpipes? I think they must be appearing somewhere. Maybe not. So I might have to debug a little bit of code. Let me just see if I can... just find them. Um, Okay. I saw no underpipes generated there. So what does that mean? All right, I gotta debug the code a tiny bit. Let's 
months. Set one place where I really expect it to put an underpipe. Uh, prefabs. Markers. So the place where you see the blue square, I expect an underpipe to show up there. And it's at 35, 12, negative 41. So then I go back to the editor. 35, 12, negative 41. 35, 12, negative 41. Did I get that right? Yep, I did. Okay. And then, and then, and then. Basically, I want to see why it didn't fill right there. Pardon me, I, I promised no code for these sessions, but I'm just going to look at it a little bit. Won't take me too long. I don't think, I don't think it will anyways. So I set a breakpoint there and hit apply. Okay, so this is the, this is the second one. Um, it did meet the strata criteria, meaning it's it checked it was a thin strata. It was successful. The square was empty. I'm guessing it's it's in the uh, rules I have for filling. Um, So in the square, it's checking each of the four directions to see which one is uh, against the wall. So I just went through north and south. Is west the wall? Yes, west is the wall. So in that square, the wall is to the west. So now I'm going to check for every wall panel that's available in this rule, which ones will fit. There's only one in this particular rule. Let me take a look at the innards of it. Uh, huh. It's curious to me that even though when I made the fit mask, I said there's only one square to it. No, no, it's 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 doing it right. It's doing it right. It, okay. So that's all there. All three of these are zero zero zero. That's good.
H is 12 is 12. So all that should be inside of Okay, so I'll check the strata. In H should it be equal to max H? It is. This should really be H equals min H, H less than equal max H. So I'll have to remember to change that, but that, that wouldn't cause this bug. Just make a note to come back and fix that. That would cause a different bug. So far, no problems yet. Prefab is set. So far, it looks uh, looks good. Looks like it's going to place something. set a breakpoint for this other part here. code that actually adds the uh, underpipe to the scene. So that worked. That all worked. This code might not be right. But it created it. That's that's the thing that's weird. So it created this. I mean it should put it at least someplace on the board that I can see it. <clears throat> 
So that's the old underpipe. Um, so it would have made it in level de decorations. I think it's here, but it's just not. Um, it's not visible because of some weirdness. I am kind of wondering, did I, did I, did I set this up right in the rule? Let me check that. Also, I'm going to delete everything in here so I can just see if it created it or not easily. Okay, editor. Just this guy here seems to be the only thing that was created with any errors. Oh, there are some errors. Well, okay, let's fix the couple things I found. Um, so I, I am going into the code on this one. Um, I don't have such a following at this point that I'm going to be terribly bothered by departing from what I said I was going to do on this episode. Uh, if you're somebody that likes watching these things and and it does bug you that I'm going into the code, just let me know. If there is anything in particular you'd like to see happen on the, the Sunday show, I'll listen to that kind of stuff. Uh, I don't promise I would uh, follow it, but for now, this is uh, not a heavily attended show. I don't have any chatters on right now at all, if I'm going to be honest. Um, and uh, I'm just going to mix in my coding and art for this one. So, because I want to solve this problem. Okay, what is all that? All material for strata code is failing. I think I think that is just I have like an automatic set in one of these. So let me I get rid of this guy.
Actually, you know what? I, I even like double changed my mind. So I'm just going to end this session right now. And the session will be more or less what I said it was going to be. Um, and then I'm just going to do some coding, but not in, inside of the main session. So I'm sorry I didn't have something more interesting to show. Um, like I, or I should say more... Uh, I, I would like to have a little more victory in the session. But that's fine. That's fine. I, I just need to dig in and solve this problem. Uh, and I'm going to do that outside the bounds of the session. Okay. I'm going to shut this down. Thanks for watching. Bye.